Hey kids, again, setting records here on Fridays with Friends. It's our third or fourth show. Go figure. Welcome to Amarillo Races with Slick Willie and Elvis, or Elvis and Slick Willie. Whichever way you want it is the way we're serving it up. Right. <laughs> Elvis, super, super stoked today to have our next guest. Yeah. Do you know who this is? Everybody knows okay. who this is. Yeah. Calvin King, two-time track champion back to back. Who does that? Who does that in five years? Right, five years. Five we, years, we've been, two we've been championships. 37 years, ain't done it yet. <laughs> That's the truth. Wow, when we started the show, the first thing uh, we wanted to do is acknowledge the champions from the, the previous season, 2020, where everybody was racing for the COVID Cup. And once again, <laughs> Calvin King came out on top. Calvin, two years in a row, man. Yeah. You're slaying them. No, nah. <laughs> we, we've had some pretty good years, last couple of years, pretty good seasons. For sure, for sure. I had an opportunity to talk with uh, you and your father a few weeks ago when uh, we were talking about putting this show together. What a treat it was to find out a lot about you. I want to talk about your uh, 2020 season first off. You, know, you pulled off your second championship. What did it take to put that 818 in victory lane each week? Well, just a lot of just week in, week out, just hard work on the car every week. Um, you know, just regular maintenance throughout and really just try to put the worrying about points behind us this year just really try to get out there and try to get the wins um they're not easy to get out there but that's what we were shooting for and we just ended up at the top again so how many wins did you pull off in 2020 uh we only got two wins this year right right well that's two more than a lot of guys got most competitive class at 66 yeah, in my opinion how many cars are in the class sport mods man i think we average pretty close to 30. That's stout. Every Saturday. Yeah, so that's we, stout. One we, slip. Yeah, and yeah, one slip. You go from the A main to the B main. You don't make that. Guess what? You load it up and then you go to go get some cold beer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm privy to Amarillo Racing. I know a lot about the past and I know a lot of people that have come up through the ranks here in town, but I've been gone for a little bit and it was a real pleasure learning who Calvin King was. I mean, uh, you quietly killed him. You killed him with consistency. You were there each week. I didn't see you in the B mains very often at all. You put it on him two years in a row, man. Yeah, yeah, we had pretty good seasons. Um, last year, I think we ended up two B mains, but uh, the new format they were running, the uh, draw, redraw, you know, I really liked that and it, it helped us out a lot. And we just uh, read the track right and made the right changes, so. Well, like I said earlier, Slick Willie, when they're you're down in the pits and they're fixing a call of lineups, third heat, sport mod, then you line up there and then you see this 818 come up there beside you and you're just gonna go, I don't even think I wanna race. Cause there's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he'll put it on you. But probably the best thing to do is get behind him. He's going to the yeah, front. He's gonna go to the front pretty fast. We've got a lot of similarities. Uh, we both grew up doing the two R's, racing and wrestling. Yep. Multiple championships in wrestling, multiple championships in motocross with this guy. We also have another common bond, your, uh, your wrestling coach, David Carino. Yeah. Good friend of mine growing up, wrestled with him in there. Uh, Calvin King, difference between him and me is he was winning championships and I was just playing, I guess. But uh, his focus has switched to uh, the dirt track the last five years. And boy, you and, you and your old man have got that modified dialed in. Tell me what they really broke it down for you and really started creating su some success for you guys? Well, I mean, we've had a lot of help, you know, to get started in it. The, uh, the gossips were a big help to us. They've helped um, a lot of people. That's where we bought our first cars and everything. And they gave us a lot of pointers, helped us out a lot when we needed it. And then uh, just over the years, just really learning how to drive it. Um, that, that was my first two years, probably, just to figure out how to get around the track. And then uh, right before, the year we won our first championship, um, we went to that race logic class, and that right there is probably our night and day different start program. So, so tell me about this race logic class. Is we talking motors? We talking suspension? We talking setups? What, what, what did you learn? Mainly just uh, setups. Uh, keyed on a lot of setups. Uh, a lot about shocks. Um, a lot about what the chassis do, how they react, um, what you're looking for, and just everything in it. Elvis, you. you Picking up on any of that? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting all the kids. Uh, this is the man yeah. to soak up See, here. What a lot of people don't think, like everybody thinks you win the race at the track. You don't win the race at the track. You win the race in the shop. 
a lot of a lot of yeah. shot stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of knowledge, you know, that goes into, you know, when you go work on your car and you've got like his dad in the gossets and hey, you didn't do this right. You've got to do this different, and that's what when a lot of people put a lot of stuff into it, you know, you got to you got to sink it in and then use it. It, it might work the first week, but you just got to keep after it. Yep. Isn't that right, Calvin? That's right. Yeah, it all starts in the shop. The more you do in the shop makes it for an easier night on race night. I agree. One of the things I noticed in our conversation with your dad and you was you guys have a really tight bond. Mm -hmm. when, when we were talking about your wrestling, he was heavily involved. When we were talking about your motocross, he was driving across country to make these races. Looks like he's right there with the sport mod too. How important is your dad to you? He, to me, he seems like he gets the best out of Calvin King. Is that true? That is true. You know, if it wasn't for my dad, I wouldn't be able to be racing. I wouldn't be able to do it. I mean, it takes a lot. And he believes in me and everything I try to do, wrestling, you know, dirt bikes, racing cars. You, you can know, see that. He believes that I can do it. And it may take me a little bit to get there, but you know, once we both get our heads together, set our mind to it, you know, we, we succeed, so. Determination yeah. plus preparedness equals two championships for Calvin yeah. King in yeah. five years. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's where a lot, you know, when we talk about Amarillo racing, is family. Right. You know, and that's where it comes in, and to have a, a dad like that Calvin has, it just makes it a lot easier when you have somebody that, you know, can be on your side. Like Share that. the load. We've got uh, 2021 coming up. These guys are going to be gunning for you with those two championships you've got. Yeah. What do you, what do you got for them? What do you want to tell your competitors right here, right now, that Calvin King's got for them Sport Mod boys at 66 this season? Well, I mean, we'll have another car. So uh, just like last year, we're just going to come out and race, have fun racing with them. And, you know, if we luck out and get another one, then I guess we luck out and get another one. That's the plan. <laughs> Three time, three time sounds got a nice ring to it. We don't, I don't we don't want to jinx you, but uh, yeah, yeah, no jinx. <laughs> so we we show up every Saturday, just like everybody else does. We prepare, get ready, and we try to win. I mean, if you're out there racing, not wanting to win, then I don't know. That's, that's just what we do. So yeah, it's fun. We've talked about your 2020 season. We've talked about your plans for 2021. Who you got helping you each and every week? Who, who puts that 818 car on the track with their time and their money? Well, we got a lot of sponsors that have uh, been with us for a while. Great sponsors. Um, Alliance Recovery, uh, the company out of Lubbock, deal with a lot with uh, waste tool. So okay. they'll go around and pick up waste tool from companies and they uh, they recycle things like that, used for fuel in their, uh, for like highway construction stuff. Oh, wow. That's so they're, good to have them they're on board, a big huh? part of our program. Um, we got CNK Electric of Chops. Chops, a good guy. He's uh, one of the dad's good friends. Um, very smart electrician. He uh, he gets in it with with me and my dad a lot. You know, he'll come out to shop. He'll hang out, help out. Um, he's there every Saturday night at the races. Um, in the trailer, you know, just anything he can. He's all about it. That's awesome. So he's he's been with us since we started. Uh, we got Smokey Joe's um, down on Sixth Street. I was there Friday night. Yeah, party on the Great patio. Place. Best party on 6th Street. You so bet. They got live music, um, great food. We got Brandon Smith at Hydraulic Plus. Oh, good. Um, he's a big help with me, um, big mentor of mine when it comes to racing, and really just a great friend. Our kids, they ride motocross together, and uh, we just hang out. He's a good guy. We got Express Scale Services. Um, they've been with us since we started. Uh, Real good people there, helped us out every year. Um, yeah. They'll be back on the car again. My dad, King Racing, um, we started King, he started King Racing back when I was uh, doing motocross. Yeah. So we carry that over into the cars and, you know, that's, we wouldn't King Racing, we wouldn't have anything. So he's, uh, every year, been a big hope. Well, you can't do it without those guys, you know, uh, this, this racing, it costs money and it, it is not a, uh, a cheap thing to do. So yeah. we, we we're really proud to provide you guys a platform to give these guys a shout out. And we want to thank everybody that helps Calvin King and all of our racers get to the track each and every week. And uh, you racers and sponsors, remember this. TV is now affordable with the Slick Willie and Elvis show. That's right. Calvin King, we thank you for coming out. We, we want to congratulate you again on last year's championship and the previous year. We've got a lot more uh, drivers from present day, from past day, coming at you this season. Elvis? 
You got anything more for Mr. King? No, all I want to say, man, you, you better you better have your socks pulled up when you get on the track with this man, because <laughs> he's, he's going to be gunning for you. So I can't wait for the 2021 season either. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, now one more, this is a little scenario. I'm going to throw this on Elvis right quick. Uh -oh. We'll get the hands out here. <laughs> so we got Calvin King right here. We got Elvis here. We're going into three and four. This is the last lap of the B feature, final transfer spot. Calvin King on the inside. What are you going to do, Calvin? You going to give him the pit? You going to pass him on the outside or are you going to let Elvis make it? Let Elvis make it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna let you make it. Oh, yeah. I, don't know. I, I think what you know when you're, you're you're in that situation going into the last turn, you don't know what you're gonna do. You know because you don't know what that guy beside you's gonna do. You don't know what your your own self is gonna do. You're just gonna try to get to that checkered flag as quick as you can, whether it's him or anybody else. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. Checkers are wreckers. Yes, Checkers yeah. are wreckers. Well, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Amarillo Racing. Again, coming at you from Gossip Garage, your accessory and accessory installation experts here in Amarillo. Just opened up about two, three months ago. Go see our good friend, uh, Jeremy Gossett. We thank him for uh, allowing us to film three segments here. Yes, sir. Get on by, see Jeremy. You know you've been wondering what he's been doing. He's got his stock built up. He's got guys working hard in back doing some great builds. So, uh, Again, thanks to Jeremy Gossett, Gossett Garage. Hey kids, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Amarillo Racing with Elvis and Slick Willie. Stop by and take a look at the 2021 Atlas Cross Sport. The Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport screams luxury. With its eloquent exterior body lines and its plethora of interior features, this is surely a vehicle you'll want to take a look at. This vehicle has less than 100 miles. Searching for a dependable vehicle that looks great too? You found it, so stop in today. Tanya Price here with Pescara's Italian Restaurant. I have missed y'all so much. There's so much going on. Look, I'm gonna fog up, so you might not be able to see my face because I'm under this dadgum mask still, but we're getting too closer to a point where we don't have to wear them. So, I'm here with the beautiful Lori Howard. Hey, oh, look hi at everybody. Look at her shirt, oh, right? And are we, we excited? Yes, we are here to talk about the Hope and Healing Place, which is a huge organization, so true to my heart. And 
So we do the big cheese every year, which is a huge event for Amarillo. Yes, it is. And it's our largest fundraiser for the Hope and Healing Place. So right. that's even better. But because of COVID, obviously, we're having to make some changes. Correct. So kind of tell us some of the things that y'all are going to do this year to do a little different. And just know that Pascara's is going to back y'all whatever we can do. And we love to be able to oh, participate. We help love you our guys. partnership so. with Pascara's. They're so amazing and so delicious. I mean, why would you not want to <laughs> head I mean, on look over? At this. Hello. Look at that deliciousness. On that I, ball. Know. I hope yep. my trainer's not watching this uh, because right? I worked out today and this was not on my diet plan, but right. that's okay for today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have to have our comfort food. Ugh, right? I do it every day. This right here. I'm, I'm a quality control tester when it comes to the bread. Yes, of course. So two pieces a day. Yes. You know, I got to make sure it's good. I can't have you bad bread. Right? Carb load, right? <laughs> a little exactly. bit of carb load. So, so tell this us what year, we're doing. We are changing it up. So instead of just one night of cheesy deliciousness, we are opening up the big cheese to a traveling event. So you don't only have one night to eat all the mac and cheese your heart's desiring. You get to travel from January 22nd through the end of February to eat all of this delicious mac and yes. cheese. Awesome. So we're so excited that Pascara's is our restaurant that's participating in the big cheese. And we are so excited to be a part of it. Yes, so we're the tickets are um, $25, which is so affordable because if we have 25 restaurants participating, it's a dollar per stop. And all of those monies come straight to the Hope and Healing Place. And for those of you that don't know, the Hope and Healing Place is a local nonprofit grief and loss center. And we are the only grief and loss center for children um, in our area. So your dollar is not only going towards delicious Pascara's comfort Yum. food, but it's also <laughs> coming right back to an Amarillo nonprofit. So what's better than that? Delicious comfort food and giving to a local nonprofit. Awesome. I love that. And what also I love about this is obviously this is on our menu, but for the night that we are including in this, we're going to come up with something creative and do something totally different. Right. Who knows what it'll be, but this is on our menu. And then plus we have another mac and cheese dish, but I know that there are so many restaurants here in town that are going to be participating that are going to bring their A game. Right. And the and variety is what's fun about exactly. this competition. You never know what you you're going to get. What you're gonna get. <laughs> so your mac and cheese could be just a regular mac and cheese. Or it could be this with some delicious, delicious sausage in it, bacon. There's no telling what Tanya's going to come up with for her no. competition. So going back to the competition part, because our chefs in Amarillo are very competitive. Very much so. So at the end of February, we are going to be hosting our private judging and um, competition portion of the Big Cheese. And so we're super excited to see what Tanya's going to bring That's gonna be so um, awesome. for her mac and cheese. But shh, it's a secret. We're not telling right? that. We're going to give you a little taste test here, but we're not going to give away all the goods. Right, so, so we're su super excited. We just want Amarillo to continue to support the nonprofits, um, especially Hope and Healing Place. They mm -hmm. do great things for families. Um, you know, grieving is never easy. Obviously, you know, everybody's experienced. It feels like more loss in 2020 than, you know, we ever thought possible. And so we just, you know, are so grateful and so appreciative of you guys over there for everything that you do doing these things in the community. I mean, and y'all support other agencies and you support all the restaurants. And so to me, that just, that speaks volume about you guys. And I am just so honored and proud to be even just a small part of this. And I'm super excited about it. And guess what? What? I have something for you. You do? Woo! You get an official Piscara oh, shirt. Oh, I love the bright I colors. Know, so now you are one of us. And I also brought you a <gasps> Woo! Yes, I am part of the big cheese, guys. Oh my gosh, I love it. John Cobb, eat your heart out because I got a shirt, buddy. I love it. Oh, I love um, it. We too. just appreciate the support of the Scaras. As you, all of you know, as you watch Tanya, she supports so many of us in the Amarillo area, and I'm just so excited to call her a friend. And not only just a friend, but someone that loves the Hope and Healing Case and loves Amarillo. So, you guys, you're not going to, if you're wanting to support local restaurants, Pascara's is a perfect local restaurant for you all to come out and support. Thanks guys. We appreciate you so much and we can't wait to see you here and all the other restaurants that are going to be involved in the mac and cheese. So get you know it's delicious. Chicken. That's right. Get them. Get a hold of Lori, Hope and Healing Place. Find us on Facebook, right. Instagram. That's Either right one of those guys. Two places, the Hope and Healing Place. Get in touch with somebody. Even give me a call here if you don't know how to do it. I'll get you in touch to the right people. So, with that being said, we are about to dive into this mac and yes, cheese. I'm ready for yes. my food. See you guys soon.
Hi, my name is Eric. I'm a student at Faith City Mission. Um, I got here by the, the grace of God, really. I was, I'm 21 years old, and I, I lived my life um, without trusting in Him for a very long time. 14, 15 years old, 16 years old, probably, I, I picked up drugs for the first time. I, I was, they started with sports. I would go to parties and things like that, and we just drink or, or do other things. It led into other things, and um, I really, I really just hadn't had no regard. And I didn't have a relationship with God. I didn't have a relationship with my family. I didn't have a relationship with myself. I, I would just cover up all these fears and guilts and and worries from the past through the, through drowning them out. And um, I, about sixteen or seven, about seventeen years old, seventeen or eighteen, I got introduced into um, a drug called Spice or, or K two, and. The first time I smoked it, I was physically, emotionally, and spiritually just addicted to it. I, it was it was my higher power. It was the only thing I could rely on. It was absolute zero for me. I felt I felt like I didn't have to deal with anything whenever I was going through these these addictions. And um, I uh, I ended up one year when I was I believe 18 years old. I ended up going to South Padre for spring break and. This was after years, probably four years or so of, of drug abuse and not getting along with my family and not, not knowing who I was as a person, not knowing why I was even alive, not knowing what my purpose was. Um, I went to South Padre for spring break with a few of my friends and we, we had been smoking and doing whatever else on the way down there. And I was standing on the beach and I was looking around at all these people that were just having a good old time and they were just partying and just, they were all gonna go back to school the next day and I was gonna go home and. I feel just be miserable and I didn't want that life anymore and so I cried out to God I cried out to God on that beach and I asked him to help me and he just he told me to leave that's the only word he would tell me is leave Eric leave please Eric just leave and so I took that to heart for the first time in my life listening to God and I went back home that day to Amarillo and within a couple of weeks a friend of mine he gave me a cigarette that had that inside of it it had spice inside of it and it threw me back into my addiction instantly and uh, this time it was even worse, and I, because of the guilt that I faced, the the shame that I had, because I, I didn't hold up my integrity with God, I didn't hold up my integrity with the community that I had built around me, I didn't have that passion anymore, and I, I felt like I had violated myself with going back into it, and so I there, there was I felt like there's no saving me this time, and I was in Amarillo for quite some time. I had a girlfriend and a family and everything else, but it didn't. Nothing was nothing was helping me feel better because I was always thinking about just absolute zero the absolute Not just not having to deal with anything when I was high and so um, It got to the point where I didn't know I, I could barely tell you my name I could barely tell you where I lived I could I was walking the streets basically my my mother and my brothers my my sister my girlfriend everyone else They didn't they didn't know who I was as a person anymore because I didn't know who I was as a as a person anymore and Throughout this whole addiction, I was crying. I, I'd cry out to God, God help me, God help me. But the problem was, I wasn't willing to put in the effort myself. I wasn't willing to go through the the growing pains and go through the the uncovering of 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 dirt and just to get rid of all those things. I, I was scared. I didn't want to face it. And finally, after after months and months and people just giving their all to me, I I, I faced. I faced the ultimate decision in my life, and it was August eighteenth, two thousand sixteen. And I was at my mother's house actually, and she sent me out and said she couldn't handle seeing me in pain anymore. Whether I was using or not using, I didn't have a love for anything. I didn't have a love for God. I didn't have a love for myself. I didn't have a love for the people around me. And she shut the door on my face for the first time, really. And I, uh, I walked to my grandparents' house, who were previously pastors. I've always had a really good relationship with them and been able to rely on them. And my grandma walked me in and she said, your grandfather wants me to tell you something. And I asked her what it was. And she said, he doesn't want to talk to you until you can grow up and figure things out as a man and quit relying on other things. And until you have a relationship with God, he doesn't want to be a part of your life. And it just, it made me angry. And so I left there and I just, I walked the streets for a few days and I let all that sink in. And I just kept crying and kept crying out to God. And and finally, I, I ended up at my aunt's house, and I had been sober for quite a few days at this point, but I, uh, I had no passion about myself. I didn't know what I was going to do with myself. I didn't know where I was going to go. I didn't have any goals or any, after, any, any vision on life. And I showed up at my aunt's house, and she was talking to me, and she was, 
uh, asked me what I wanted and I told her I wanted to do something different. I wanted to have a life that, that I could love people again and that could could help other people with my experiences. And uh, Something had been brought up about this place you can go to for a year and it was faith-based and it was, it was a year and that was my problem at first. It was a year long and I, I wasn't too sure about it, but um, she ended up talking me into it and I promised her that I would go check this place out. And so on a Sunday morning, I came to Faith City Missions and I met, I met at the front door Alex Romero. And, um, he, he told me I couldn't come that day, that I had to come back on Monday. And I, as I was walking out, I was scared. I, was, I thought I was gonna not have any place to go that Monday. And I, I really wanted to change. And for just like my problem has been for so long, I, uh, I wanted that change now, but I wasn't willing to put in the work to wait another day type of thing. But one thing led to another, I ended up coming back the next day. They opened the doors with open arms and allowed me to come into this program. And it's the first program I've ever been into in my life. And it has shown me so much about myself. It has shown me a gratitude for, for life. It's shown me a, an appreciation for my family and my friends. And it's shown me the love of other people. It's shown me, the, most importantly, though, the love of God. And without God, I wouldn't be here at all. There's so many times that, that he stuck his hand down to me when I was walking in dark alleys figuratively and and he held my hand and showed me where to go and he led me he led me here to faith city and i'm, I'm grateful for that 